Hello, I've been in the studio today filming the uh, end part, uh, the review part uh, of my new online course, Making Your Mark. So I have all of this up in uh, the, the visuals up behind me, so I thought I would just uh, come on here and say uh, hello and welcome to uh, this video. Uh, I'm not actually going to be talking about this particular work, but what I did think I would do is just to sort of remind you that if you want to uh, sign up for my course, or if you want to have the free lesson as a start point, then please go to the link that is in the comments or the uh, details of this video. Uh, and very soon I will be releasing the course. Uh, so if you've signed up for the free lesson, then you'll automatically get the information and the link for the course. Uh, and I'll be uh, offering an early bird offer. So uh, watch, watch, watch out for that. So uh, all my new subscribers, thank you very much for subscribing. I have quite a few new uh, subscribers this, this week, so thank you very much and much appreciated. What I want to do today is to talk a little bit about inspirations that are not just about the physical subject matter. So what I want to do today is to take a bit of a different tack and share some of the books that I have been looking at uh, some of the texts, some are art books, some are general books uh, that um, help me as I develop my paintings and my artwork and how I kind of use those. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to put the camera onto the desk so I can just share a few of those, something a bit different this week. OK, thanks a lot. So what I've done is I've divided my kind of books really into four categories and I thought I'd just share some examples of each of those categories. So the first category, which is in front in front now, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Um, but this first category is more about the sort of like the technical aspects of the subject matter, be it drawing or painting and uh, books that that I use for developing my work and sort of dipping into for techniques and approaches and inspiration in that way. So that's the first category. And then the second category is uh, books that I have about various artists. And I've got a couple to show you um, of those. And, and those are more about the artist's work and the artist's approaches and they're specifically um, sharing their their kind of works um, really and and the, and the works that they've done through their lifetime so that's another category and then a third category I have are books that I read um, to try and give me a greater understanding of the subject matter um, so in my case about landscape more broadly um, than just the very spe specific things so um, I'm going to share some examples of, of those sort of fiction um, books really or sort of fiction non-fiction and then the last category is what I call sort of inspiration books really that have sort of not exactly coffee table, that sounds a little bit negative and I don't mean that, but I mean sort of visually very tantalising. They're not books necessarily that I read that much, but I flick through for inspiration visually. So that's the fourth category. Anyway, let's, let me get started. So this first category, and I'm just going to literally mention a couple of the books and, and very briefly uh, mention what they're about, um, because otherwise I'd, I'd be here kind of forever. So uh, these three books um, are all uh, very useful books for me and I dip into them quite regularly. The first of them here, this is Drawing Projects and an Exploration of the Language of Drawing. And this is uh, by two foundation um, course uh, teachers, Mick Maslin and Jack Southern. And that is a really useful book, actually. It's got interviews with artists. It's got aspects of drawing and mark making, including light and negative space and doodles and sketchbooks and so on. And it's also got um, just different artists giving different exercises and different approaches to their work. So it's full of lovely, wonderful visual examples, but it's also full of practical pra um, projects. So I, I do dip into that quite regularly. And then uh, a couple of books. Um, let me talk about the green one first. This is the book of Emily Ball, Drawing and Painting People, A Fresh Approach. And this is full of wonderful uh, tips and explanations about painting and about the painting process and about mark making and about pushing your work and striving to be more inventive. So this is a really exciting book focused on the figure, but a lot of things can be applied um, outside of, of figure figure painting. And I, and I must admit, I do dip into that a lot for inspiration around process, but also for um, specific exercises that I love to do. And so that's the Emily Ball uh, book. Which and then the, the last one in this little group that I've got out is um, 
uh, a very reasonably priced book actually in black and white called Mar uh, Wild Margins by Anne Johnson who's also a journalist and this is a lovely little book full of uh, stuff around around as the name would suggest wild margins the edges of places um but also she's got birds in here she's got uh, allotments in here she's got still lifes in here uh she's got all sorts of mark making and extraordinary little drawings that are really inspiring and rather rich and lush especially in the context of mark making and so um her book is just lovely and uh, worth a look at. And she has these lovely poems going through some of them as well as alongside the drawings. And now I'm going to move on to the, the uh, group with uh, about artists specifically. OK, so I talked, mentioned that I was also inspired by other artists and I like to look at art to specific art books. And I've got two here. Um, one of them is uh, Joan Erdley, uh, Sense of Place. Um, which I'm going to just flick through in a minute. And the other is Roger Cecil, a secret artist. And so Joan Erdley was kind of um, on the edge between sort of abstraction and and um, and reality, so, sort of semi-abstract. And um, she did this wonderful paintings of uh, of children in Glasgow in, in the sort of slum areas, but also did a wonderful body of work about Catiline, which is um, outside of, of Glasgow, actually, some distance on the coast. Uh, and she did some wonderful paintings and oils, as well as many drawings and sketches. And so I'm going to um, just flick through the for, for now. So I've put this aside so that you can actually see the whole thing. So um, this is really quite a, a lovely book, which is full of uh, her drawings and paintings and her out in the landscape and explanation. And this is all her um Catiline uh sort of says about it there in the 50s she also drew, drew painted these wonderful children that she had going and sitting for her so it was all all her work was done from life really so she really was quite um an inspiration really and it was so sad that she died so soon because no doubt she would have gone on to produce even more amazing work a book that I'm very fond of, Joan Erdley, and of course, because of my interest in landscape, that makes perfect sense, uh, you might think. Uh, and then this book is a book that I've only just um, just acquired recently, actually. And uh, the the uh, this is he was a very interesting and secret artist, and didn't really um, have exhibitions and things, and so his work became very sought after. And I think he died uh, quite uh, sort of suddenly, and I think it was 2015. Um, but I'm not entirely sure, but I'll just flick through that. Um, and the fact that he was, yes, 2015, 1942 to 2015. And I'm just going to flick through. I'm not really going to say so much about his work, um, apart from just to flick through some of the sort of wonderful imagery, really. And I hope sort of over time i'm sort of collecting different books of of um artists that i really love the work of that i want to kind of look at in that way um and, and you know sort of study the paintings of but also read a little bit about their their life and try and understand where they were coming from with their work so what i want to do now is to move on uh to the sort of more sort of literary type um books that i I look at associated with the subject and interestingly I've got four books here but I just wanted to kind of mention really a couple of them I've finished now um, one of them was Robert McFarlane Landmarks and it's all about the, the the words and the language associated with landscape a really fascinating book actually um, full of, of, of richness and, and rich rich descriptions um, but the the other book which I've really loved and which is very relevant to what I'm looking at which is Woodland this um, Wildwood a journey through through trees, uh, Roger Deakin. And there are so many uh, wonderful quotes in this book that I kind of just started to underline them and so on. And he talks about trees in all manner of ways, um, from his trips to um, trips, trips abroad to his life in uh, Suffolk, um, where he had um, a, a, a property with a with a moat, um, living in the woods. You can see this apple day, willow shelter, forest of Dean. So he kind of almost travels the um, the country in the, through this book and talks about woods throughout, but also goes uh, to far away places. And it really is rich with uh, some wonderful. Quotes to, and this one here is, is my favourite really, and I have it at the front of my sketchbook, um, is to enter a wood is to pass into a different world in which we ourselves are transformed.
and it's kind of like history is it history is it traveler's tale is it about natural history is it about biology there's a whole kind of raft of things all into into kind of connect in this in this book really um and so it's really uh quite an inspiration and you might think well you know that's all very well but what do you do with this i guess for me when I'm doing my artwork, I just like to have that broader knowledge of the subject matter from different angles, whether it's from other artists or from people that maybe have different angles on uh, on, on nature and a bit more sort of scientific. I kind of like that. But also what I tend to do is I write these sort of quotes and things in my in my sketchbooks and I find it quite helpful because it gives me that sort of a greater meaning and perspective really. And sometimes I even write quotes and things in my own handwriting and I insert put those into my paintings through the collage. So they you know they appear in different ways. So that's those two. And then these two books, I thought I would just mention these because these are um two new books for me actually I've started um, reading The Living Mountain and I'm not yet started to read The Unquiet Landscape but they do come uh, highly recommended actually and they I think they were referenced in in at least in the um, Robert McFarlane book if not the other one as well my fourth category um, I put that one up up for now um, I'll just grab the others actually I have three books here actually again um, and these three um, really reflect my interest in texture and surface and uh, sculpture and uh, sort of ta tactile aspects of uh, and materiality of uh, subjects, really. So maybe I should just go through them one at a time. And let me start with, with this one because I've probably had it the longest period of time. And because I have a background in landscape and landscape design, and landscape architecture, this was... Um, something I've had all the all the way through that time actually the elements of design rediscovering colors textures forms and shapes and the reason I love this is it's such a wonderful book to flick through for inspiration what is absolutely spectacular about this book is the way it's actually set about so how it is set up is literally done in this double page way with things that just reflect each other but are different to each other and it's just a wonderful wonderful let me just flick through it so that you can Where really a really interesting and useful useful book actually and so the next one i want to just have a look at is uh, the next oldest one and that's uh, time by andy goldsworthy and this is another one that i kind of dip into for inspiration there's some beautiful nature pictures in here um and i just wanted to sort of again uh, flick through um you know his whole work out as a land artist out in the landscape and the beautiful forms, his drawings, his sculpture. His wonderful drawings that I really love to look at and these sketchbooks and things. So that's just, again, another eye can You know, in some respects, there's a lot to this book, but I also use it as an eye candy sort of flick through. And then the final book is a very recent um, book that I acquired from, from Debbie... Debbie Lydon, or Ly yes, Lydon, and um, it's called Fragments, and it's a very beautiful book. Let me take the, the other one away so that I can just share it with you for similar uh, reasons. And she walks along the coast, and her, this idea, I think, of fragments is to do with the, the fact that she's um, doing things from memory, and it's the memory of things, um, and based on her walks along the coast. So I just thought this would just this is just another example of inspiration from other uh, artists and art forms, really. Um, and I just thought it would be nice to sort of uh, mention about these other things, because usually I'm talking about my own work or about my sketchbooks and things. And just to say that, you know, the, none of these things work in a vacuum. It's all of this inspiration from outside as well as the subject matter inspiration that helps um, the development of the work. So thanks very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe and please do follow the link to my uh, course, which is coming, which is called Making Your Mark, uh, which is going to be on, which will be on the details of uh, this video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.